So in my hand is a iPhone 7. Now this iPhone 7 was released way back in 2017, I want to say. And yeah, it's still going. It still works. No cracks, no big issues or whatsoever. But it is getting slow compared to today's iPhones. Because I've got an iPhone 15 and it is noticeably faster than this iPhone 7. Because I went from an iPhone 8. Anyway, long story short, this iPhone is getting on the slow side. So I thought today, why don't we overclock it? You know, let's overclock it, get that extra performance out of it. Now you might be wondering, how the hell am I gonna overclock an iPhone? Well, the only way that I know how is thermals. And by that, I'm gonna be using ice and a heatsink. So let's get into it. Now the app that I'm gonna be using to get that extra performance out of this phone today is actually Geekbench 6. Now this is an app on iPhone, iOS, whatever you want it. And I also believe that it's on PC as well. So, I'm going to be running the CPU benchmark today. So, let's run that first without any sort of modifications uh, to the phone. So, in total, we got a single core score of 870 and a multi core of 1335. Now, compared to today, yeah, the iPhone 15 Pro on single core gets about 2,000 more points, which is about three times the performance. So yeah, the iPhone 7 is definitely getting slower, but let's try and overclock it. So we're gonna need a couple things. First of all, a nice tea towel to lay down. Uh, that just makes sure that your desk doesn't get too dirty uh, or wet, because we are gonna be using water and ice. Next, we'll need a heat sink. Now this is from the Intel Stock Cooler heat sink. Um, there are currently rubber bands on it, I'll explain that in a minute. But this is from the Intel Stock Cooler heatsink that I took off my friend's PC because he broke it. Um, but the heatsink is still perfectly fine, so I'm going to be using that today. Next, you need like a plastic container. Anything will do. You just don't want it to be too tall. And then you need something to prop the heatsink on top of. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the phone into the heatsink and make contact with the copper shim on the bottom of it. Now this is pretty simple. You just get some rubber bands and that'll hold and make contact with the phone and uh, try not to scrape it too much. Um, that's why I'm using an iPhone 7 and not an iPhone 15, because I, quite frankly, don't really care about this phone anymore. And there you go, your phone's attached to the heatsink and it's held pretty tight. If you wanna go above and beyond, you can put some thermal paste on, which is what I'm gonna do. Now for this, I'm just gonna use some spare thermal paste I have lying around, nothing too special, um, especially considering it is just a phone. But all you wanna do is like apply it to the heatsink on the bottom, and Bob's your uncle. Then you just want to let that smooth out, press down, make sure the um, thermal paste spreads out, and you should be good to go. Next up, you're going to go to the kitchen and get a bunch of ice and water and fill this with ice and water. Now as you can tell, that's pretty full, so the container's pretty much full, which means that when I put this in, this is just something to prop up the phone, Then there's a little bit of room, and then once I finally put the heatsink on, it can touch the water. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to let that cool for just like, I don't know, a minute or so. And then I'm going to start the test and see how it goes. Yeah, no, it's like not hot. Because before when I was touching it, it was like pretty hot overall. But now it's like, you know, room temperature. Yep, that is a really weird result. We got a lower score. I believe before we were at 867 and now we're at 814 and the multi-core score is way lower. So if we go into the CPU benchmark history, look at that. We've reduced so much. So that's our score before and that's our current score, which I'm very confused by. It just doesn't add up to me. Mind you, we are at a lower battery percentage, but I don't think that should impact it that much because all things considered, we were on about 50% battery um, compared to 80%, which is about optimal. But oh my goodness. Um, yeah, what a weird result. I've also got thermal paste on the back of my phone, but oh my God, is it cold to the touch? It is 
I don't have a heat camera, but like it's really cold, which is good, I guess. But yeah, that's really weird. It's not like it wasn't cooling it. It was definitely cooling it. But I don't know. I've never seen that before. Like I wouldn't expect that result at all. Now what I want to do is I want to... Actually, no. I want to see if I can run it again. You know what? I might be able to just run it right now. Five minutes later. So I just ran the benchmark again. And we've got even more confusing results. So let's go through it. All right, so I just ran the benchmark and I didn't charge my phone. I had a lower battery percentage uh, currently. I don't know if you can see that. I had 16% battery. Um, so yeah, I was definitely running on low battery. If we go to the CPU benchmark history, you can see that our scores are really weird. So that was the first test without a CPU cooler on it. That was the second test with a CPU cooler on it. So you can see that our therm, our multi-core score, which is on the bottom, is a lot lower. And then this was my last test with less battery life than the cooler test. And the multi-core score came up, which is really weird. Now, Apple do say that colder temperatures can affect the performance of your iPhone, but I didn't think it would actually apply, you know? I thought it would just be like a battery um, issue where if you're in cold temperatures, your battery can really like degrade. But no, this is just really, really weird. Maybe the power delivery was affected. But as you can see, there's definitely a disparity between these two results and this result. So should you water cool your iPhone? Definitely not. I don't know why the multi-core score was so bad, but apparently it decreases your performance, which is not what I expected, because normally with PC parts and computers and technology in general, it likes to run when it's colder rather than hotter. So I really don't know what happened there. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. If you did enjoy and were surprised by the results, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and as always, I'm TechBiz and I'm out.